YouTube channel. So, this is the video that you guys have been waiting for, explaining what in the world is going on with spatial audio on my Mac. Okay, well I'm here to answer those questions for you. So, if you're aware, I've already made two videos similar to this issue. The first one was how to enable spatial audio in Dolby Atmos. The second one was a follow-up to that. This is a follow-up to both of those videos. So, it's kind of difficult. <laughs> so, okay. Spatial audio was introduced to macOS Monterey. And I, as I mentioned before, some features that you may see in my YouTube video, you might not see available depending on your region. I'm in California, so um, if you're in another state, another country, those can all be factors of why specific things are not showing up. That's just something to keep in mind. Um, and then, of course, computer type is also another thing to keep in mind. Um, it shouldn't really affect you that much if you were able to get Monterey, but it's still possible that it may happen. I do know that spatial audio does work on my um, early 2015 MacBook Pro, which has, of course, an Intel chip because there was no such thing as the M1 chip at that point. And then my current MacBook, which is my MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Both of them have this option in macOS Monterey. Um, now, people who are saying that it's not working are correct. So in the beta, it was working without an issue. But the official release, I'm not sure what happened, of course, during the course of creating new software for customers things can change code-wise behind the scenes, and it can cause some things not to work. That is something to always keep in mind. Um, unfortunately, I was on beta software at the time of making both of those videos, um, and I actually downgraded to uh, Mac OS um, Big Sur and then upgraded back to Monterey just to kind of see what was going on. I can confirm that from Big Sur, there was the ability to stream audio on Apple Music in Dolby Atmos and in Lossless Audio. Both of those features were available. Now, Spatial Audio was available in the beta of Big Sur before they announced Monterey, but while it was available in the beta, they removed it from the beta of Big Sur and moved it to the beta of Monterey probably just guessing that Apple needed more time to test it out. And that's why you never saw it debut when there was the software update for Big Sur and there was the iOS update that enabled spatial audio and all those other cool features. That's why that didn't happen at the same time. But it looks like the issue is still going on because now that we have the full release of Monterey that we've been patiently waiting for, it still is not exactly working. And I'm just going to kind of show you really quick. So if I play a song, and as you can see, these, this album of Arne Grande's is uh, in Dolby Atmos, it's lossless, and it's also Apple Digital Master. So if I play this song, you can see that it plays in Dolby Atmos. While it plays in Dolby Atmos, it does not play in spatial audio. So if you click sound, you'll see spatial audio is grayed out. I'm just going to turn this down just so that way I can speak well while it's playing. Um, okay, so as you can see, spatial audio says not available and it's grayed out. But we have the options of turning noise cancellation off, turning it on, and turning transparency mode on. If we just quit music altogether, though, and we go over to Safari and we go to YouTube... And we decide to play um, the same song, but on here, we're going to go to Ariana Grande, POV. We're just going to go to this um, lyric video. 
Of course, an ad is going to play first, because why not? It's YouTube, and everybody makes money off ads on YouTube, so, except for people like myself, because I don't have at least a thousand subscribers, so, anyways, as the audio plays, if you go over to the sound settings, you'll now see spatial audio is enabled, and you can turn it off, and you can turn it on. So, there's definitely something wrong with the way that Apple built spatial audio into Monterey. There's a bug that's causing it not to recognize music in the music app, but it's recognizing music that's or sounds that are played elsewhere. Um, so, it's kind of like strange. If you are seeing the same thing as I am, where you can go to sounds on YouTube, and as long as something's playing, it shows spatialized stereo. That means that you're seeing the same exact bug. Like, if you go back to music, and... Oops, my apologies. If you go back to music, and you play something in music... And it does not show spatial audio as being available this is a bug it, it's not something that is going to be able to be fixed until apple addresses the bug with their um with their development team and then the development team will release an update that will fix the issue now we have to cross our fingers though and hope that apple can fix the issue kind of quick because if they believe that it's going to take a long time then in the, the next software update we may or may not see the option they may just remove it permanently until they can fix it um just something to be aware of i did submit feedback to apple through the feedback application if you've ever done beta tests of any of apple software on like your mac your iphone iPhone or your iPad, you know that there's an application that will show up after you've restarted your phone and it'll say feedback. So basically I went in there and I did go ahead and detail them some feedback and I did a screen recording showing them the issue that I'm running into and the issue that you guys are also running into. That way Apple is aware and their development team has been very um, communicative my apologies, I'm like getting tongue-tied over here. They've communicated very well in regards to situations like this. So when I f give them feedback, they usually will send me feedback back, just saying, hey, you know, we want more information on this. We can try and resolve the issue. Or they'll even send me an email. So um, unfortunately, I can't show you guys any emails they send because as a beta tester, um, some things, especially like... Um, internal and external communications with Apple's um, development team is strictly between me and them. So if they send me an email and I'm showing everybody, it may not be good for Apple, so, you know, or their team. And, you know, for me, because I've tested lots of software, I will abide by those rules. Because, I mean, if I was having someone test my software and I made those rules, I'd want them to follow them. So I can't necessarily show you guys... The email, if they do send me an email or emails I've gotten in the past, but rest assured I have submitted feedback so that way Apple is able to go ahead and work on getting this issue resolved because it is a bug and that's why it's not working. If you don't see the option at all, so say you click on, say you click on sound and you see your headphones here, I would recommend clicking this arrow if you have one to see if this pops up. If you don't even have an arrow here, or you have an arrow and you click it and you get everything except for this grayed out spatial audio not available tag, then I would contact Apple support. The reason why I'd recommend that is because if you contact Apple support, they can try and see if they can fix it for you remotely or over the phone. If they cannot fix it, 
then you can let them know, okay, well, I, had, I know tons of other people who are also experiencing the issue. Do you mind helping me fill out some sort of feedback request to Apple? And either they'll help you fill out a feedback request or you can fill one out on their website and they'll direct you to what website to go to. So it's just something else to also keep in mind because it is something that can help as well in getting this issue resolved as soon as possible. And... <clears throat> Pertaining to this issue, I do want to thank everybody who has reached out to me on YouTube in regards to this issue. It is actually greatly appreciated because, you know, on my end, I didn't even fully notice that it, that it wasn't working until the official release. When I went to the official release because you guys were saying, hey, it is still not working for me. And I looked and I was like, oh yeah, the official release is not having it work. And now in the new beta it's also not working so i do appreciate you know you guys reaching out and telling me that feedback um the engagement definitely helps out with finding and spotting issues so if you guys see any other issues don't hesitate to put it in the comment section or um or Hmm. I'll try working on some way that I can communicate with you guys other than just YouTube. So maybe I can make like a Twitter account that's just for my YouTube channel or what else is there? Or I can probably make an Instagram account. <clears throat> Excuse me. An Instagram account where, um, you know, I just kind of post snippets of the videos that I have uploaded on YouTube and you guys can comment there as well. I don't know. We'll, we'll just kind of see and work it out in this video. Actually, in the comment section below, you guys can give suggestions on if you guys would like me to make an account on another platform for to communicate. Um, and I'll try making one on that platform per you, per, per you guys' suggestion. But yes, I hope that this video does well. Um, I hope that it helps clarify what's going on with the spatial audio feature now i do want to clarify further though that dolby atmos and lossless audio should still be available to you to use because spatial audio is not dolby atmos the reason why i say that is because the way that dolby and apple and amazon all market spatial audio makes it seem like it's part of Dolby Atmos. Like you have to have it to listen to stuff in Dolby Atmos. And you actually don't. You don't need it in order to listen to stuff in Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos is similar to like a spatialized stereo 3D environment. But Apple also created a feature called spatial audio that is exclusive to the AirPods um, third generation, the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max, in which it takes all audio regardless of it being in Dolby Atmos or not, and it spatializes it um, in a 3D space and it allows you to listen to it in a 3D experience. And with head tracking um, between your phone and the AirPods, it allows it to actually move the audio around your um, your head space as you're moving your head around. So that is what spatial audio is. Dolby Atmos is a 3D audio experience, but it's built during the production of the track. So basically the track is um, created and once it's created and completed, then they go in and they add the Dolby Atmos um, mix to it. And once it's mixed and finalized and mastered in Dolby Atmos, they release a Dolby Atmos and stereo version of the song. So that's just kind of a FYI for those features. So if you don't see spatial audio, then what you're going to want to look for is you're going to want to just look for this little icon up here that says Dolby Atmos. And it'll show up on all of your devices. It should look the same on every device. Um, Sometimes audio can play in Dolby Atmos if you have Dolby Atmos on and it may not show the icon, but it's still playing in Dolby Atmos. Um, that's also something else to keep in mind. And then of course, lossless audio is separate from both of those. Lossless audio is just a compression. So it's basically just telling you that the song is in the most 
closest to studio version. That's what Lossless is. Because Lossless, you're going to see a song play in Lossless anywhere from 16 by 44 to 24 by 44 or 48, all the way up to 24 by 190 or 192. So it's just something to keep in mind with Lossless. Lossless has nothing to do with Dolby Atmos, has nothing to do with spatial audio. Anyways, guys... That's what's going on with, with Spatial Audio. I hope that you guys liked the information that was provided here. Make sure you guys thumbs this video up. It would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe. I just want to ask you guys, please help me try and get to a 1,000 subscribers. It, it's important for me, and the only reason why is because at a 1,000, it gives me the ability to then monetize my content and in monetizing my content it opens up more opportunities for my channel so for one i can get better items to unbox and review for you guys two i can hopefully do giveaways which is something that i've actually dreamed of doing since i started this channel so please 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 try and get me to a thousand because at a thousand we'll be reaching a goal so like tell your friends family members you can even tell random people on the street hey i know this person on youtube they have very very cool videos and great information their their name's liam lopez and you can just go to youtube.com forward slash liam lopez reviews and you'll get to my content so Please, guys, it'll be just amazing. And then additionally, I do have music that is published and available. My music is available on all streaming platforms. And really, it's just the soundtracks that play behind the audio that I usually have going on in my YouTube videos. Unfortunately, I don't really have it playing in the background of this one because it's more informational. But for instance, this is one of my songs. And it's available on... Um, on Apple Music. If I just go to my profile really quick. As you can see, this is me. These are my current two songs and I have another song coming out on November 1st. And I also have Adobe Atmos version coming out on November 1st of my track called Oceanside. Anyways guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys subscribe, thumbs this video up, and I will see you guys on the next YouTube video.